Hi Hoopers, Michelle McCoy here with Autumn Flow and in this video I'm going to give you some guidelines on how to pick out your first PolyPro hoop, which is this guy right here. And first I want to say that if you are a brand new beginner hooper, I'd recommend that you first go watch my how to pick out your first beginner hoop video because starting out with a beginner hoop is great for especially learning on body hooping because the larger and heavier the hoop, the slower it's gonna move and the more efficiently you're gonna be able to learn a lot of the foundational hoop dance moves. And then when you're ready to level up your flow or if you just like to get a second hoop as a beginner to practice more off body movements with, that's where poly pros come in very handy. And poly pros are much, much lighter than beginner hoops. They are thinner and generally smaller in diameter as well. So they're gonna move a lot faster. They're much more responsive and bouncy. So this is great for a lot of off body moves because it's not gonna be as hard on your hands and as prone to bruising them as a larger, heavier beginner hoop might be. So my personal recommendation as a brand new beginner hooper is definitely to get a beginner hoop, but if you're able to get a second hoop, get a poly pro hoop as well so that you can have one to learn on body hooping and one to learn off body hooping. And then eventually when you really master those on body core moves, you will be able to blend both on body and off body hooping and just stick with your poly pro hoops. So when using a poly pro hoop, your movements naturally have to be a lot faster and more precise because since they are so much lighter and more responsive than a beginner hoop, they are less forgiving and it might be harder to recover the hoop from a move, especially a move where you are quickly reversing the hoop's direction like during brakes on your shoulders or your knees. So just keep that in mind if you are transitioning from a beginner hoop to a poly pro hoop. Give your body some time to adjust to the new speed and rhythm of your poly pro hoop. And there is no one hoop size fits all. Your perfect hoop size is very specific to your individual technique and type of hoop flow. So that being said, I'm going to familiarize you with all of the different poly pro options and give you a little poly pro versus HDPE comparison to give you a good solid starting point on where to begin picking out your first poly pro hoop. So let's go over the different tubing thickness options for poly pro hoops and there are four of them. So I'll give you a close up look here. The green one is the thickest, which is 3 fourths, and then the white is 11 sixteenths, the purple is 5 eighths, and the hot pink is half an inch. And as your first poly pro hoop, especially as a beginner, you're definitely going to want to start with a 3 fourths tubing option. It's just a good generic size and it'll give you the most stability and control over your hoop. And the second thing that you're going to need to know when ordering your poly pro hoop is the diameter. And diameter is of course measured from one point of the hoop to the other. Some hoop shops might measure this by OD, which is the outer diameter, and some might measure by the inner diameter, which is ID this point to this point. As a beginner and for your first poly pro hoop, this really isn't going to make a huge difference, but it's just something to become aware of for when you progress and it does make more of a difference. Hi hoopers, I am back with an updated recommendation for ordering your first poly pro hoop. When I initially posted this video to my YouTube channel a few weeks ago, I started to get a lot of beginner hoopers ordering their first poly pro hoops in diameters that were way too small. And I couldn't figure out why until I realized that I must have freakishly long legs <laughs> because I recommended to you guys to order your first poly pro hoop with the diameter 
measuring the length of your inner leg. And this hoop is a 30 inch poly pro and it's pretty close to the measurement of my inner leg. I could probably even add an inch to that. And I was getting other people ordering diameters of 24 inches, um, 26. You know, those sizes are just way too small um, for anybody to use really as a beginner especially. And the smallest hoop size that I personally own is these guys right here. These are 25 inch hoops and you can see how itty bitty they are compared to my other hoops. And I only use these hoops for off body techie double moves. So I want to give you an updated recommendation for the diameter of your hoop. Still order 3 fourths tubing size and a bare hoop with grip tape on the inside. But instead of measuring the length of your inner leg and ordering that as your diameter, I would recommend staying in the range of 29 to 35 inches. Um, the length of your inner leg is a great goal to keep in mind to progress down to when you're ready. And you want to progress down in your hoop sizes slowly so that your body has time to adjust and it won't be as shock, as much of a shock to your body and your flow if you try to immediately jump from your standard 38 inch huge beginner hoop to an itty bitty 28 inch poly pro like this one and I just got this one 28 inches is my new favorite size but I'm an advanced hooper um, so you want to start with something in that range I I really liked my 32 inch poly pro this is a 32 inch it can still be used for on body hooping and off body hooping together. Um, my very first Poly Pro was actually a 36 inch and it felt a little bit too big for off body moves, but it helped me with transitioning in on body hooping from my beginner hoop to Poly Pro because Poly Pro tubing does move a lot faster. So that is my updated recommendation. And now let's get back to the original. Let's talk about what type of finish to get on your hoop. And I'm not gonna cover all of the options because there's a lot. There's taped hoops, which is this one. There's bare hoops. There's reflectives, LEDs, color morphs, hoops with one spiral versus two spirals, crisscross spirals, it goes on and on. So I'm just gonna give you my recommendation. For your first Poly Pro hoop, order a bare hoop with gaffer's tape on the inside diameter. And that is this guy right here. This is bare UV yellow tubing with hot pink gaffer's tape on the inside diameter. And this tape is very grippy. And what it does is it makes it a lot easier for on body hooping because a bare poly pro surface would be much more smooth and it'll slide right off your body especially during leg hooping like this with the hoop that's itty bitty like this one this is 25 inches in diameter but the grip tape makes it grip to your body and it's just a lot easier not as easy as a beginner hoop would be with on body hooping but it's just a good option for your first poly pro hoop and the second thing i want to show you real quick is the um most common connection types for poly pro hoops. And your poly pro hoop will generally come with a push button connection, which looks like this. It'll come in a little box coiled down. You're gonna open it up and just let it breathe a little bit and regain its shape. And then when you're ready to connect it, you just insert one end into the other, whoop, just like that push the button in and slide it until that button snaps through. And there you go. And if you do decide to just go ahead and order a taped Poly Pro hoop, that's fine. I can understand the temptation. They come in so many pretty colors and patterns 
and I have so many of them, but just be aware that the tape can get torn up so easily. So do not use them on rough surfaces like rocks or concrete. Even if they have that clear protective layer over it, you really have to take care of it to keep it from getting all ripped up. So now I wanna give you a quick comparison of PolyPro hoops versus HD PE hoops. And from looking at them, you can't even tell. And as a beginner, flowing with them, you probably won't be able to tell much of a difference either. The biggest difference is that polypros are more responsive and bouncy than HDPE hoops, which are a little bit more stiff. So if you like moves that reverse the hoops direction a lot, like breaks and paddles, you're probably going to want to go with a polypro over an HDPE hoop. And polypros are very slightly lighter than HDPE hoops, but really not by much, not enough to make much of a difference. Another thing to consider is the type of climate that you live in. I'm in Mountain Home, Arkansas, which is a very warm climate. We don't get um, very brutal winters. So most of my hoops are polypros because they hold up their, um, form better in warmer weather and HDPE hoops kind of tend to get bent out of shape when the tubing gets warmed up. Um, it kind of almost starts to feel kind of rubbery, but they are great for colder climates because in colder temperatures, this tubing is much more durable and less likely to crack. Polypros are horrible in cold weather and they break so easily when the tubing gets cold. So those are the main differences between polypros and HTPE hoops. So to sum all that up for you, my recommendation for ordering your first polypro is to get the 3 4 inch tubing thickness with a diameter close to the distance from your inner thigh to your heel. And then as your hoop flow naturally progresses, your preferred hoop size is probably going to downgrade because your movements are going to get faster and more precise and you're going to want to get a smaller sized hoop to keep up with your flow. I hope you found this video helpful and please feel free to message me with any additional questions you might have. This video was kind of a crash course on picking out your first Poly Pro hoop. If you would like a more in-depth video going over all of the different hula hoop options then there's a 30 minute video over that in my complete online guide to hoop dance course which is available at autumnflow.com thank you for watching and happy hooping